not even gonna lie to you, bro. I laughed at the first 15 minutes of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> that nigga Yuta has got to have the most anime backstory of all time, period. <laughs> Welcome back to After the Hype, the show where we talk about media after the hype or hate dies down. On today's special sit down episode of After the Hype, we'll be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. If, if you already couldn't tell for some reason. The reason we're sitting down is because my hubris caught up to me and I tore a meniscus in my leg. So I guess at the end of the day, the Bad Knees Nation truly won. So Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is an anime movie based off the manga of the same name and it is a prequel to the series Jujutsu Kaisen. As a prequel, it has to be something that can both entice old fans of the original series, whether they be from the anime or the manga, but it also has to properly introduce the series to people who may not have heard of it at all, because that's what a prequel is supposed to do. And I have to say, both as a prequel and just a movie in general, it does all of that pretty well. Let's just get the obvious stuff out of the way. The animation, soundtrack, and composing of the scenes is all A1. Mappa hit it out of the park. Every scene is done well. The fight scenes don't look like animation soup. I can tell who's what, when, where, why, how. The way they filmed certain talking scenes was also really good. The backdrops are beautiful. In terms of the animation and music department, and of course the acting as well, it's all A1, top tier. The story and characters are pretty good as well, however I do have a few problems and it mostly has to deal with the villains. Now the main characters, Gojo, Yuta, the other classmates and stuff like that, they're all introduced fairly well. The, the movie spends a lot of time with them, they interact a lot, they have a lot of cool scenes, they talk about their goals and aspirations, you get a decent amount of character arcs from everybody and of course including the main character who most anime onlys will probably not see until season 3 which is hilarious because season 2 doesn't even exist yet. Now while the main protagonists and his crew of friends are all like fleshed out, uh, the villains are not. Don't get it twisted, these villains are very enjoyable to watch. It's easy to get a beat on what their characters are but not really a reason to why their characters are. Like literally some of these niggas, if not all of them, only exist to just get beat up. Like that is, that that's their goal, that's their end goal. One of the villains even admits that his only purpose in the story is to be combo fodder for Gojo. That's it, that's the only reason he's there. <laughs> he's just to get beat up. Now of course you may be wondering, what about Ghetto? What about the main villain? He was cool, he was funny, but I really didn't care about what he was doing there either and the movie didn't really, as far as I could tell. Like they kind of go into his backstory, but not really. I could, it, it probably spent like five minutes talking about anything to do with him in general. And I know they're probably saving it for the anime, but a little more would have been nice. He's very funny. He's very, you know, Saturday morning cartoon-esque. And, uh, you know, I understand he's connected to Gojo somehow, but for the most part, it seems that he just was there to show up, say the N-word, and start beating up some teenagers. Like, like that's pretty much what he does in the movie. <laughs> Another problem I have is that they didn't really talk about the powers or the power system at all, which to new viewers will probably be kind of a, uh, distracting like people that are like oh it's a it's a prequel i can just hop into this before hopping into the series uh yeah there's a lot of stuff they kind of just don't explain at all which both is a good thing and a bad thing because it does leave things up to mystery sim similar to the villains and stuff like that even though i don't think we'll be seeing most of them ever again um it does leave something to like you know oh you should watch the show to see this but like even as I was riding the bus back with some people who had seen the movie, uh, who were clearly new viewers, most of them anyway, a lot of them were talking about how the power system was confusing. And I was like, yeah, I could see, I could see that as being a little confusing. They kind of just show up and throw hands. They talk about cursed energy like once, but uh, yeah, they, they talk about it once. That's not really enough to really explain it. But again, it's a movie, so probably didn't really have that much time to talk about that if anyway. But even with my complaints, I would say both as a movie and a prequel, it does live up to the hype. Explained the manga pretty well, it was well paced, the animation was fire, and so was the music. So whether you're going in as a fan of the anime or the manga, or just somebody that's trying to watch a good animated movie, you're in for a hell of a time. It lived up to the hype. A few issues, but it lived up to the hype. I, I, I was not disappointed, not even a little bit. Wake up. 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 